Here I am in Chachapoyas. It's a national heritage site. Very, very beautiful indeed. I can't wait to check it out, but that's gonna have to wait till later because first, I can't be late to our next destination. We're still traveling through Peru to discover what makes Peruvian food the best in the world. Now, in the last chapter, we went to Puno and Lake Titicaca. Doña Julia, she told me that my hypothesis was wrong. But I have another hypothesis. Peruvian food is the best in the world because these recipes are isolated and they're passed down from generation to generation. I mean, look at how remote this place is. How are outsiders supposed to discover these recipes? They can't until now because I'm here. So maybe I can discover these recipes. Maybe this is the secret of why Peruvian food is so good. I love to see the citadel, the ancient citadel. I love stuff like this. at the top, but the journey doesn't stop now. No, we have a half hour hike to the top, so there's only one way to get there. Slowly. No, I'm kidding. We're gonna race to the top, come on. I have to say I'm pretty excited to see this because so far, there's just been a lot of signs. Be amazing. inside the very first level of Quelap here, and it's absolutely gorgeous. There were about 500 of these homes back in its heyday, and as you can see, they have really magnificent views of the valley and of the Puebla proper. 2,500 people lived inside of this citadel, but I wanna know even more, so let's go meet my guide. Is it working? Oh. What we have right here is the Puebla of Cuelap, so that's like where all the common people used to live. And behind you, where we're about to go, is the citadel, it's the fortified city. This is what delineates the line between the noble people and the common people. 900 years older than Machu Picchu, and as a New Yorker, I'm really, really happy when there's not crowds of people. So let's go check this place out. We've got the whole thing to ourselves. Finally here with my guide, Daisy. Hi, Daisy. Hola. Hola. Everything I've been telling you, Daisy has given me this information. Uh, she's the expert. So in all of Chachapoyan culture, this temple right here, this is the most important one. 
religious ceremonies happened here all the time, never any sacrifices. And architecturally, it's really, really interesting because you enter the temple from the top. Say what? No, no, no. No entraban, solamente arrojaban las ofrendas. You don't go inside the temple ever. You only go to the top to offer, uh, to put offerings inside. And, and they have the ceremony on top. Yes. Pretty interesting. Here's a really great example of what living in this citadel was like. First of all, you have a round house. This is in reference to the gods of the sun and the moon, both of which are round. But it's also like the ring we wear on a finger when we get married. It represents unity and infinity within the family. It's very beautiful. First of all, the kitchen, my favorite thing. Here's your food processor. It's a, it's a molicajete, it's a mortar and pestle, and you're able to create pastes and grind down the food. Where's the pantry? Where's the refrigerator? Well, it's in the form of this stable here. They would keep some small animals in the house with them, feed them, and then eventually they'd eat them. The home only has one window. It's up there. So everything's pretty dark, but I think that keeps it nice and cool. It's good. And then you can see that we have shelves to put little tchotchkes, spices, other things that you use for daily life. <laughs> that was pretty magical, I have to say. Coelab was absolutely beautiful, but you know, the reason they built it up there is so no one could attack them. And that means it's a heck of a hike to get up there. So I'm really hungry. And here we are back in Chachapoyas. That means I want to eat at one of the best restaurants they have, El Batan de Taita. <laughs> Creamy rice with amarillo, yellow corn liqueur, green and red cooked plantains. Hello, Frankie. Hi. Welcome to El Batan del Taita restaurant. My name is Nelson David. Nelson David, nice to meet you. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. I'm also very, very hungry. So, uh, can you give me some recommendations? Everything looks good. Recommendation, Taita Campesino. Okay. Taita Campesino. Taita Campesino. Cecina, baby pork, criolla sauce, Cecina de res, can, Very I go good. To, can I go to the kitchen? Can we just do this yes. in the kitchen? Vamos, vamos. Vamos. Come on. Okay. Vamos, vamos. Cocina. Vamos. Vamos. Shrunk the Kids. Do you know that movie? I guess I'm not getting any help here, huh? <laughs> what happens in Peru stays in Peru, I guess. It's 
very skeletal, that's for sure. Does it taste bad? No. You know what? When your buddy Harry has had a couple too many, you know, and he comes from the South Shore of New Jersey, this is what you give him. See how much of a real man he is. <laughs> this is almost like a white Russian Peruvian style. There's a ton of cinnamon, there's sugar cane, you've got uh, whipped egg whites on top, which is what all the foam is. It's got cream, it's got pisco, which is like a Peruvian version of grappa, so it's muy fuerte. Getting past the ants is the hard part, but once you do it, it's easy peasy. It's a really tasty drink. After a long day of hiking and seeing amazing things, I have to say this meal was absolutely delicious. The pieces of pork that were hanging by the clothespins, or as we say in the business, C-47s, they were really delicious. And all the different platanos that were fried and that corn thing, really good. And there was a hot sauce on the table that I could not stop spooning onto every single thing. How was it made? It was made with this Peruvian indigenous pepper called rocotta. And I'm gonna put this in my box because I think this is probably what makes Peruvian cuisine so good. <laughs> it's been a long day. I've been to Chachapoyas, I've been to Nuevo Tingo, I've been to Cuela, and now I'm in the Plaza de Armas and I'm trying to decide if my hypothesis is correct. Why is Peruvian food so good? I thought it was because of their recipes, their secret recipes, but you know what? I need to throw that one out the window because this is not the case. I have found that the Peruvian people are very open. The chefs are showing me step by step every single thing they do when they make a dish. So it's not the recipes that make their food so spectacular. And all I have now is a box that's getting a little bit heavier and one more chapter to decide what makes this food the best in the world. So tune in to the next chapter.